All right. Um, so learning target 5.3, we're finding missing sides of right triangles. This is a review from geometry. Uh, I think this will ring a bell as soon as you see it. Okay. Um, if I have a right triangle, and I know that oh, this distance right here is 8 feet. And I know that this angle right here is, oh, let's say, 32 degrees. Is this where you do like okay. one angular? Not yet. Not yet. To find angles will be well the other Right. Because right now, wouldn't you know all the angles inside that triangle? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, because all three angles need to add up to 180. So you could easily figure <coughs> out the other one. Uh, but let's say... I didn't know, well, I don't know these other two sides. And we'll go ahead and we'll figure both of them out. I probably am using bad variables there. So let's go Y and R. That makes a little more sense. Okay. Uh, let's figure out those other two sides. Can you use Pythagorean's theorem? No, because you don't have what? Two sides. You don't have two sides. Okay, so you can't do that. Once you have two sides, then you could use Pythagorean's to figure out the third. Okay, I probably wouldn't just because I'm feeling we're going to have decimals. I don't want to work with decimals. Okay, um, you can use sine, cosine, or tangent to help you find the missing sides. Okay, we know that the tangent of any angle in a right triangle is equal to what over what? Opposite over adjacent. So would you agree with me that the tangent of 32 degrees? Would equal, would be have to be equal to y over 8? That's the definition of tangent, so there's no reason why that wouldn't be the case here. Could you solve that equation for y? Yeah. yeah. Sure, you could get y by itself. What would you have to do to both sides? Multiply both sides by 8. So I'm going to times 8 here, I'm going to times 8 here. I'm going to write it as 8 times the tangent of 32 degrees equals y. Then you'd want to get out your calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Mode is the button kind of in the top left. Mode is located right up by your second button up here. Or there you will find mode. If you hit mode, one of the choices down, a few down is degrees or radians. Okay? You want to make sure you're in degree mode for right now, since we're working in degrees. We'll work with radians later, so you'll have, you will have to change once in a while. But if you take 8 times the tangent of 32 degrees, you should get... Let's go two decimal places. A lot of times I'll go to the hundredth. I know that's usually what I ask for, so... Oh, 4.998. Okay, yeah. So... Y is about 5.00 feet, okay? I like writing 5.00 to kind of identify that I have rounded it to the, the hundredth place, okay? Uh, notice I've also kind of put squiggly lines there. I'm not going to count you wrong if you don't, but why am I doing that? Because it's about equal to that, all right? It's not exactly. The only way you could really write your exact answer is this right here. Y is exactly equal to whatever A times the tangent of 32 degrees is. Okay? Then you'd count something out. Yeah. No. No. You would? If we put A times the tangent. Oh, no. Because uh, I'll watch. Yes. Sorry. Because my directions will be to round things to the nearest one ever. So, yeah. Uh, Alright, so there's our y value. So now I know y is about 5.00 feet. Okay? But if you wanted to use Pythagorean's theorem at this point, I would want you to actually use that 4.9989548815 number. Okay? How much fun does that sound like? Would you have to use all the decimal points? Yep. Because if you just use 5, you're going to get an answer that's going to be off just a little bit. Okay? So, alright, if you want to do that, go for it. Have fun. 
All right. Um, enjoy. Use your previous answer button. That's fine. You're going to get by without it. Okay. What else could I do instead and not have to even use that value? Could you use cosine? Could you use cosine? What is the cosine of 32 going to have to be equal to? Uh, 8 over R. 8 over R? Yeah. Yep, 8 over R. Adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Okay. Now this one's just a little bit different because your variable is in the denominator. So to solve this one, what will you do? You multiply by R. Multiply by R. Because then you get R out from the denominator, okay? So if I multiply by R, I have R times the cosine of 32 degrees equals 8. And divide the cosine. And then divide both sides by the cosine of 32, whatever that decimal is. So 8 divided by... Approximately be equal to 9.43. Anybody else getting that? Yep, seeing a couple of yeses. Okay, good. 9.43 feet. Questions on finding missing sides. Do you remember this a little bit from geometry? Some of it? Okay, some yes, some no. Okay. This all comes back to Sokotoa though. Did everybody see that? Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, that sort of thing. Okay, any questions? A um, couple terms you might see. Angle of elevation. If you were on the, standing on the ground and looking up at a flock of birds flying, okay, and the book gives you a problem like the angle of elevation up to that flock of birds is 55 degrees, okay, here's what that means, okay, wherever your eye level is, you kind of need to think about that being like zero degrees right there, okay, wherever you're looking straight ahead, that's like zero degrees. The angle of elevation would basically be how much above that you have to look in order to see whatever it is you're looking at up in the air. That is, that is called the angle of elevation. So if, you were, if your eyes were looking right up there, that is an angle of elevation. It's how far above parallel, you know, or how far above the horizontal from your eyes you're looking up at something. <coughs> There'll also be an angle of depression. Same thing, but instead of measuring it from your eye level up to something you're looking at, take a wild guess. You're looking down on something, okay? Um, oh boy, let's get creative here. Um, cliff, water, 
boat sinking. You uh, never mind. I'm just looking down here at the boat. That right there is your angle of <coughs> depression. Okay. It's measured from horizontal down to what you're looking at. So when you see those vocabulary words, they probably make sense. You'll probably um, always remember the beautiful pictures that I drew to go along with this. Okay, it's so artistic. Um, but uh, just make sure you know the difference, angle of elevation, angle of depression. Okay? Um, one thing you could think about too here, let's say you had somebody in the boat looking up at you. What would be true about your angle of depression and their angle of elevation? It would be the same. Okay, now we're really getting into some geometry. Okay. But this angle right here and this angle right here are the same because why? Alternate interior, Alternate interior angle theorem, yes. When you have parallel lines, <laughs> alternate interior angles are congruent. Remember having to make that proof a few times? A few times. Just a few. Yeah. So, uh, just a little bit there on angle of elevation, angle of depression. Uh, let's see, what else here? Let's go to do one more problem with you um, to relate to some more geometry. This is number 21. It says, each base angle of an isosceles triangle measures 42 degrees, 30 minutes. Um, guys, when you see this on your assignment here, 42 degrees, 30 minutes. Remember how I talked about how minutes and seconds were like decimals or parts of a degree? I completely just want you to drop that part and just use the whole degree that's there in the book, okay? We'll, so we'll just use 42 degrees, all right? Okay, so it says each base angle of an isosceles triangle measures 42 degrees. So I got an isosceles triangle. Isosceles means two sides are the same. Each base angle is 42 degrees. So each base angle is 42 degrees. And then the base itself is 14.6 meters long. So 14.6 meters long. And we're going to find the length of a leg, so we'll call this um, L, the altitude, or the height of the triangle, we'll call that H, and then also the area of the triangle, so area equals Okay. You have enough information there to find all of those things. How might we do that? My picture is not to scale, for sure. Ideas? Take 14.6 divided by 2. Yep, well even though my picture doesn't show it the best, okay, when we have an isosceles triangle and we drop the height down from the top, it does split those into two equal parts, okay? So you can divide that by two, you get 7.3, and the reason we'd be doing that is because we really just want to focus on what type of triangles? Right. right triangles, okay? And at the beginning, we don't have a right triangle. If you just look at one of these, all right, then you would have a right triangle, and then you could find all the missing parts just like you did at the start of class. Okay? So if you think about it, you have here, here, here. We don't know the height, but we can figure it out. We don't know the length of a leg, but we can figure it out. We know this is 42 degrees right there, and we know this is 7.3 right there.
Now this problem is identical to the one we did at the start of class, right? Okay. I'm not going to finish this with you for time purposes. I want to let you be able to work. But what would I set up to help me find the length of L? What would I set up to help me find the length of L? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Drew? Uh, you do cosine of 42 uh, equals <clears throat> 7.3 over L, and then you just solve for L, yeah, right? Perfect. You said cosine of 42 equals 7.3 over L. Solve it for L. Awesome. How about for H? Somebody different. Caleb. Would you do sine? Or not? It'd be tangent. So it's opposite over adjacent. You could do tangent of 42 equals H over 7.3. Yep. Could he have used sine? If you've already found L, yeah, you absolutely could. Don't use the rounded version of L. Use the whole thing. But yeah, once you have L, if you want to use sine, you certainly could. Yep, absolutely. There. You could, uh, after you found L, use the Pythagorean theorem. After you find L, you could use Pythagorean theorem. Again, just don't use the rounded version of L, but you could definitely do it. Okay? <clears throat> and by the way, how do you find the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2. Is he right? Base times height divided by 2. Yep. Why is that the area formula for a triangle? Because triangle is half of a, or a rectangle. Triangle is exactly half of a rectangle or parallelogram. And the way you find area of a rectangle or parallelogram, you do base times height. Cut it in half to find the area of the triangle. Okay? Yep. Nice. Good job. Okay. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. One more thing on calculators, you're not really going to get into it yet um, on any of the pro story problems you have right now. But if, if I would ever ask you to find the cosecant of 22 degrees on your calculator, okay, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to be able to do that one by hand. I mean, that'd be different. Now, cosecant of 30 degrees, I'd expect you to be able to do that one by hand. Because 30 degrees is one of those that we know from our triangles. Okay? But cosecant of 22 degrees, you don't know. All right? How could we do this on the calculator? Do you want to put the cosecant on sine? This is the only way we can do it on the calculator. I don't believe any of them. Maybe yours is different if you don't have a TI-84, but you don't have a cosecant button, okay? So in order to do the cosecant of 22 degrees, you'd have to do 1 divided by the sine of 22 degrees to get your answer, okay? What's the, like, cosine negative 1 button? So that right there, yeah, that's called inverse cosine, and that will be used to help you find angles inside of a triangle. Okay. Um, they, it kind of un does the cosine ratio, and we're not quite doing that yet today, but um, it does go along with this learning target. But that is different, definitely different than a reciprocal, okay? All right? Um, okay, that is it. Assignment. Not for statistics. Page 302, 10 through 14, 23, 25, 26.